This 13th floor video session is powered by The Rock Shop. Hi, I'm Marty Duda, and you're at the 13th floor with Yukon Era today. This is Christian from Yukon Era. There yep. are four of you all together. In yep. addition to Christian, who's the lead vocalist, do you also play guitar? Yep. yep. So uh, we have uh, Lockie Thurlow, who's the other guitar player. Yeah, he's over there. James Thorrington on you drums. Got it. You got it. And Pierre Beasley. Yep. Beasley. 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 He's on the bass, on the bass guitar. On the bass, yeah. Very good. All right. Well, we got that sorted out. And of course, the big deal that everybody makes about you guys is how young you are, right? It's true, yeah. You're probably sick of talking about it. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So we'll try to avoid that. Okay. The fact of the matter is, there's some of you who are 17, 18, 15, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to school, some of you. Yeah. No, but I did think it was kind of cool because you guys are playing at uh, Laneway and you're figuring out that you got to get your mother or father on, as your plus ones or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> not something that you hear very often with bands that come in and talk. But yeah, it's so true. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you're doing Laneway on the 30th. Uh -huh. And you've had an EP, your second EP, just come out a yeah. few months ago. Yeah. Uh, is it actually called Consume and Scratch? Yeah, it's it, just, yeah, the EP is called Consume and Scratch. Alrighty. And so it's been out for a little while. How has that gone? Has it done things that you wanted it to do? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've played some shows around it, like we did a tour around it, um, around the North Island, which was really cool. Yeah. And we got like a lot of, we had a couple of people come out to see us, which was always Always good, and I think I think people liked it. So that's yeah. is it the first time you played outside of Auckland? No, no, we've we've done some like South Island shows before the EP came out and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> not the first time. <laughs> and is it different playing in front of like a, a relatively foreign audience than to, to be here in Auckland playing in front of people that chances are you know at least half of them in the audience? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely I enjoy. Uh, playing to people that have never seen us yeah. before, like a lot, a lot more, because I don't know, they, they, it's, it's more exciting because they some sometimes don't know what to expect. <laughs> so yeah, it's more exciting. And do you spend time after the show getting a little feedback from them? Or yeah, something? yeah, talking, yeah, um, talking to people who haven't seen us, and like sometimes it's their first time hearing us, seeing us live. So it's always good to talk to people, and they seem to like it. So that's yeah. that's cool. That's good. So um, me, you. you Influence-wise, music. What, what kind of stuff do you listen to other than the stuff that your own stuff? Um, I think we all, like each member of the band, has kind of their own. We all have our own like interests, and we all, we all, all like a lot of stuff. Um, me, like personally, I like, like some. I like post-punk bands, and I like, but I really like Beatles and like David Bowie and. I don't um, trust anybody who says they don't like the Beatles. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just like, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've recently been kind of going backwards with my listening, like like right. years wise. Yeah. How far back are you? Um, kind of like uh, I'm kind of really into the Kinks and Velvet Underground at the moment. But uh, so you're about 67, 66. Yeah. Working, you got a long way to go, and yeah. lots of good stuff to discover. So but so yeah, yeah, exciting. that's where I am at the moment. But yeah, nothing wrong with the Kinks and the Velvet Underground. Yeah, but, yeah. for sure. Cool. All right. Well, you guys are here to perform a few songs for us. Yeah. And uh, the first one that we're going to hear is called High Handed. It's yep. the first track on the EP. So yep. what can you tell me about that one? Um, High Handed was kind of a song that Lucky actually kind of came up with the main um, riff to the song. Um, I kind of, uh, sometimes I, well, most of the time I, I write a, like a big chunk of the song and I the, the rest of the band comes in and we work out the song together because uh -huh. they're all good at the instruments and <laughs> I, I can't play them the other ones really well. So, yeah, Lockie wrote the riff for that one and we kind of just, that song was one of the first songs that we actually fully, I feel like we wrote as a band, which is really cool. So I'm, I really liked that song. All right, well, let's give it a listen and we'll come back and talk some more. For sure. Cool.
All right, we're back with Yukon Era, and we just heard High Handed. We're going to listen to another tune. I'm here with Christian, who is the vocalist and second guitar player. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Second yeah. guitar player? Yeah, All right. Totally. Um, now, I seem to remember that there was, you guys were a five piece at one point. Yeah, in, in kind of like the beginning, our friend, uh, our friend Ben played, played synth, which was like really fun. Uh huh. But uh, that he kind of went his own way, which was fine. We're still really good friends with Ben. If you're watching this, then we love <laughs> everything's you. cool. Yeah, everything's all good. But yeah, um, but you didn't think about replacing him with another uh, keyboard player. You wanted to go with all guitars. Well, no, nah, we kept we kept um, writing after after Ben left, and we just didn't feel like we needed to add synth back to the band. Right. So we just kept going as a as a four piece. Probably a wise move. Yeah, fewer synths the better, in my opinion. But that's just how <laughs> ben, I am. Ben won't like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, the next song is the title track from the movie. Yeah. Now, I see you have a, a radio edit on here as well. Yeah, that's true. We had to, well, yeah, uh, the radio stations didn't want to play the six and a half minute version because that's radio. So, it's yeah, crazy. we ended up cutting like a bit out of the song. Didn't they know, like, Bob Dylan's like a Rolling Stone? Is like yeah, seven exactly. Minutes long, and, it was a, and it was a hit. It was yeah, a hit I mean, well. people so. actually, MacArthur Park was like, some, these are all in the 60s, but they're yeah. just to show you. Yeah. yeah it's a different day. So was it difficult chopping um, it up? Um, yeah, we had some kind of, we'd chop a part out of it and it wouldn't sound right. And we cool. eventually got like an edit, which we were pretty happy with. But we will always prefer the um, oh. the full and I assume when you play it live, it's the yeah, full it's always the full version. Yeah, yeah totally. Did. So, what about the song itself? Where did it come from? Um, the song kind of. I it took me a while to I I wrote it like a really quite a long maybe like a year year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and it kind of took a while to come around, and like I wrote all the parts to it, and then interest introduced the guys to it, and they put like they put in their flavor or whatever, <laughs> which was which just made it way better than I ever thought it could be. Right. Which is really cool. So yeah, it kind of, it was kind of a long process one, but it, it ended up being probably my favorite song of ours. I so. thought the previous one was. <laughs> oh no, they would say, handed. yeah, that's, a, that's another favorite, but the, yeah, it's the, actually best that you have, that all of them are your favorite. Yeah. So yeah. It's cool. I, yeah. This, the, yeah. Um, <laughs> consuming scratch is probably, yeah, it's my favorite. That's great. I'm sticking with that. All right. Good idea. All right. Favorite. Let's give it a listen and we'll speak one more time. Yeah. Cool. Cool.
All right, we're back with Yukon Era and Christian. We got uh, one more song that we're going to listen to, but we should uh, talk a little bit about the Laneway Festival. Yeah, it's a big deal. You guys are. Have you gone to a Laneway in the past? Yeah, I went to Laneway last year. Lucky was uh, did some internal. Like, what did you do last year, Lucky? You did. Lucky, interning. Lucky was interning at, at Laneway last year, so I got to go. And the year before that, I. Oh, this year? No, it was, yeah, it was this year. Yes, well, it's 2016. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know what you meant. And then the year before that, um, uh, I tried to get in um, my drum offense, but I got caught and <laughs> it, it didn't happen. So, yeah. <laughs> and so we got a new venue this time. Yeah, it's Silo Park. Park. Oh, no, not Silo Park, sorry. Albert Park. Albert Park, yeah. yeah. So that should be so. kind of neat. Yeah. Well, easier on the feet, I think, because there's yeah. going to be some more grass. Yeah. But who, band wise, other than yourself, are you looking forward to seeing? Um, obviously, like um, Tame and Parlor, who are right. he- headliners. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing Cut Off Your Hands again. Mm-hmm. We played with them like a couple months back. And um, who else? A band called Whitney. Right. Who are, who are really cool as well. Yeah. Cut Off Your Hands and Whitney. Yeah. And for you guys who are used to playing in relatively small venues, yeah. what does this do? How does it, How are you thinking about it? Looking at um, I don't know. We're all kind of, uh, strangely enough, like not really, like really nervous. Like I think we'll all kind of be nervous when we walk out. Right. But uh, I don't know. It will be interesting because we've never played uh, in out like really in a proper outdoor thing. So. Right. And you being the front man for all intents and purposes because yeah. you're the singer, right, yeah. does that put uh, extra pressure on you? I mean, I, I, not, not really personally. I'm pretty okay with it, but like, yeah, not really. Do you think about that in terms of you being the guy out in front that's kind of responsible for entertaining uh, and nah, kind of... No, nah, I'm with that. With, when I'm with the other guys, it's just like we're all doing it together, so it's not really, I don't really get nervous. With when I'm with them, so all right. So I think it's going to go well. I hope yeah. the weather will be good, and yeah, we'll be definitely be rocking out. All right, we got one more song, and it's an older one, right? Yeah, it's true. And this is was Daily Judgment. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell me about uh, that? It's the last song off our first EP, right? Um, kind of like over time, we've like changed parts of it, playing it live. So like when we play it now. It's not really that different, but it's it's slightly different from the EP, and we have like a couple, like, open-ended sections, which is which is makes it like keeps the song fun to right. play live. So, yeah. and you mentioned when, when we were off camera that you were doing some new recording. Yeah, we've just we've just done some recording at Red Bull Studios, um, which was really really fun. Um, so we're hopefully planning to do some new stuff soon. Yeah. So. And a full album, and hopefully, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, is there any change in how the music is sounding, or is it kind of just tootling along? As no, nah, it's. Expect? I think it's definitely like developing, um, as like we're just developing as people or like musicians in general. It's changing, which is nice. Cause change is nice. Change is good. Yeah. Alrighty, excellent. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. And, yeah. Thank and you. Uh, we'll listen to Daily Judgment and catch you at the Laneway. Yeah, absolutely. Thank right. you. Yeah.